gather here today to mark the grave during the day. Our ceremony will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States, led by Jake and Ashley Fortell, great great grandchildren of Carrie Cox. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we, the members of Ezra Parker Chapter, National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, meet today to honor and pay loving tribute to the memory of Carrie Louise Davenport Cox, National number 443944. Her dedication to the historic, educational, and patriotic objections of our society has inspired all of us in our daily work for God, home, and country. A tangible tribute to her service is this grave marker approved by the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. An intangible tribute to Carrie Louise Davenport Cox is our commitment to continue her pursuit of excellence in all endeavors. We find the following passage in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapters 4, verse 18 through 5, 1. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly house we live in is dissolved, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the joys of earthly companionship and for the enrichments and blessings that grow out of united service. We give you special thanks for the life of our friend Carrie, whose interests were like our own. We ask your blessing upon every good influence of her life, upon every good cause with which she was identified, and upon those whom she loved. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Life is eternal. Love is immortal. Death is only a horizon, and a horizon is nothing except the limit of our vision. Our chaplain, Judy Culler, will now play a Shokin farewell in memory of our beloved DAR sister, Carrie Louise Davenport.
Mary Louise Davenport was born March 22nd, 1890, on her farm, family farm, in Troy Township, Michigan. The farm was purchased originally by Carrie's grandfather, Isaiah Davenport, who came to Michigan in 1836 from Orange County, New York. Isaiah and his wife, Eliza O'Neill, had two sons, Oliver, born in 1850, and William, born in 1852. On January 22, 1885, William married Margaret Gettys Rose, and from this union was born seven children, Deo, Leo, May, Ella Eliza, Carrie Louise, Mabel, Norval, and Thelma. Carrie grew up on the farm and later attended Western Normal College in Kalamazoo, which is now known as Western Michigan University. She graduated with her certificate to teach elementary school. She married Bertram Howard Cox in 1921 in Birmingham, Michigan. They settled in Flint, where Carrie taught and retired from the Flint public school system. Bert and Carrie had one daughter, Molly. Carrie joined the Ezra Parker Chapter, National Society of the Daughters of American Revolution, on April 14, 1956. Her qualifying patriot, Oliver Davenport, served in the 4th Regiment, Orange County, New York Militia, under Colonel John Hathorne. Oliver was also a signer of the Articles of Association in Cornwall, New York. This was a system created by the First Continental Congress in 1774 for implementing a trade boycott against Great Britain, thereby hoping that imposing economic sanctions would pressure Great Britain to redress the grievances of the colonies, and in particular to repeal the Intolerable Act passed by the British Parliament. The association aimed to change the policies without severing allegiance to Britain. This imposed certain hardships on the colonists almost immediately, as many items used by the colonists on a daily basis were no longer imported from Britain, and those who sent goods to England no longer had that income on which to depend. The Articles of Association are considered a precursor to the Declaration of Independence of 1776. Carrie's lineage extends from Oliver Davenport, born circa 1726 in New York, through his son, Jesse, born May 28, 1775, in Orange County, New York. Jesse's son, Isaiah, was Carrie's grandfather. We are told that Carrie loved growing up on the Davenport farm, where she learned to ride and drive horses. She did not, however, obtain a license to drive a car. She was a very good cook and was known for always having a remedy for illness. She was very devoted to her family, displaying much love and kindness to everyone. She was devoted to Bert, her husband, who was not a U.S. citizen, and married him knowing that under law she would lose her American citizenship by marrying an alien. The laws were later changed and she applied to regain her citizenship and Bert became a naturalized American. Her family remembers her as having a deep love for the United States and for being a proud Michiganian. Carrie passed away on February 26, 1981, but she will live on in the hearts of those who knew her and loved her. Her values and ideals will live on to her family and for generations to come. Those who visit the grave site will know of those values by virtue of the marker placed here today. In the name of Ezra Parker Chapter, National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, this marker is placed in memory of Carrie Louise Davenport Cox. Let us pray. Blessed are they who died in the Lord, for they rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Now may God our Father, who knows and remembers, comfort our hearts by his presence and love. Amen.
now we will end the ceremony with the placing of the rose. Almost timeless, I think. Uh -huh. well, mm -hmm. Ken Burns heard it mm -hmm. and asked if he could use it for that theme song. Hey guys.